Hi, I hope you are doing well. Welcome back to Jody. I'm Jody and this is Geeking with Jody. Uh, we were participating with our team in Patriot CTF. We totally killed it. We practically solved everything except one, which was my bad. Because in most cases, I solved the uh, part of the reverse challenges and this is not solved. Although I had no, I didn't have my Linux machine with me. I was on my Mac machine and Mac is not good for solving this one, especially M1 and M2 Macs because you cannot run Linux uh, challenges there uh, unless you start a very, uh, whatever. <laughs> not blaming anyone. And even if I had machine, had my machine, nobody was sure that I would be able to solve this hard challenge. Uh, and I didn't participate much, although I, we, our team did great. Uh, I solved this one, which was the remaining, the Elbonia, for example. This is considered hard. The kingdom of Elbonia has intercepted a transfer of an encoded message. Elbonia is a joke country. But they can't seem to break the code break the code. So I've thought, okay, we need to break the code after finding the encoded message. They have tasked you with recovering the hidden message. It is of the utmost importance that you crack it. Again, crack tells me maybe we need to crack something other than finding it. This is a hard question. Only 33 solves. One is us, which was not solved yet. Good luck, brave warrior. Thank you. I'm wearing my Vietnamese t-shirt with the red star, yellow star. We will do it, comrades. So, uh, the attachment is a message PCAP. These hints will cost you some points to look at. We did, uh, but we have a message PCAP there, and this is considered hard. What should be done? Oh, today I was checking this warp, this one, uh, Rust based terminal emulator. Everyone is trying to invent the next terminal. This, uh, for example, if I say uptime, this shows things in block. You can check a block, you can repeat a block. It does lots of helps when showing the uh, switches are which are common. It has an AI nowadays. Everything has an AI. It can answer your questions. There are some teamwork. You have to log in into your terminal, but then your team will be able to share, kill the process running on a port, blah blah, with you, and this kind of stuff. I really liked it in the beginning because it was in Rust, and I'm learning Rust, and I would love to see projects, especially new projects. Every project in Rust is kind of a new project, uh, so I will be able to contribute and this kind of stuff but later i found out that this code is not open so why use a closed source terminal they are saying that we will open it part by part blah blah but i prefer to work on a real open terminal so this was raycast this is so cool raycast you can say for example send this to the right half left half maximize it next display and lots of other launchers but this window management is kind of cool so for the beginning i will open it in the bioshock i will say open downloads messages pickup i have already done this solved the question just showing you how to work on these kind of questions so it's a uh, 1663 so 1,000 something packets, not too big. Uh, a quick browse will show you that these are mostly UDP packets and most of them, the length is 43. What I always do is first I sort based on the protocol to see if we have something hidden. We'll, go a, we'll do a quick uh, check here. These are malform packets, most probably they're not important and there are very few charge generator very few daytime dns some echo requests some ipx 
some is this Kerberos maybe, and these are all malformed packets, maybe a mistake somewhere. And we have this, some RPC, I had a quick look to these ones, then lots of UDPs. So most probably the answer is in this UDPs. They all, the length is 43. So the data byte is only one byte of data, one character, character number 67, which is equivalent to, I think, capital letter C. We can check if we... Uh, I can say, I pattern three, uh, CHR67, capital letter C, correct. So, uh, it's the ASCII equivalent of the character. So the first guess which my colleagues, my teammates played was checking all the packets and putting all of these just one after another and see how it goes. Another one was it's always too good to get some statistics. For example, run a program and record all the data and see, for example, I check this, and we have from one up to two, five, four. So we have the ASCII range in our data. First guess is, okay, the answer is here. Write a program, write all of these packets in a file and you will get a file. Maybe the answer is in that file. This didn't work. My teammates played a lot, a long time and didn't found anything there. I also did it for maybe 15 minutes or something because I knew that they have done this and this is too obvious for a hard question. Again, because of all those crack the data, decode the data, we were wondering that maybe if we put all of these characters in a file, then we have to kind of decode that file. This is why we wasted a lot of time, we used a lot of time, not wasted, this is playing. Then I found out something more interesting. If you have a look at these TCP, at these UDP packets, okay, this is the first packet in this time. It goes from this source to this destination and protocol is UDP, the length is 43, so only one character here, from this port to this port. This is a very unusual port. This is also a very unusual port. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is. I'm becoming Indian, but I prefer to be Russian in this question. Uh, and I'm not Indian nor Russian. <laughs> uh, this is very, very, very abnormal pattern. The destination port is changing. And this is in the range of ASCII. This was my main clue. I wrote a program to check all the packets and check the destination ports, find the distribution, how it's distributed. It was distributed kind of equally between these ports. So a random program was doing this. In decoding, we use lots and lots of statistics in this form. We chart the distribution, for example, of the uh, destination ports and we will see it's kind of random. So this is, was intentional with a random function. UDP packets being sent with one character of data. I also charted these. These were also random. So most probably someone wrote a program to send random characters to random ports and add some data in the middle. I went for this, checked what we have here. You got my point. Having the source port as a random port and a high port is very, very, very normal. But having the destination port on a random port is very, very, very abnormal. So there should be something here. I went for this. And after charting this, I saw that the destination port is also in the range of ASCII characters or zero based on how you count so this there should be some data here also this is very very good for udp protocol when you are working with tcp tcp is like a handshake the 
client wants to talk with the server in the TCP. You send some requests, you say, I want to speak with you. It says, okay, start it. You say, I'm starting, this is my data. And you are having a handshake and talking with each other. You need a listening program here. But on UDP, it's just like shouting. In the UDP, from the source, to from the client to the server, you just say, hi. You don't care if this is listening, if this got the data or whatever. So very good for this kind of challenge. You can write a program, send this many packets, UDP packets to random port, except a few, which has a meaning. So let's go and check these. Uh, for this kind of stuff, I'll work with Scappy. Scappy is a very cool library to work with packets. You can create packets, manipulate packets, send packets, read packets, or read PCAP files. You can import it as a normal Python library. For sure, you have to do pip install Scappy first. Scappy. But you can also just run Scappy and get an IDLE like scappy thing in your iPad. So I have my scappy here. It's kind of a Python. So I can say print high scappy. I can even do print high Jodi. And I can do please subscribe and tell your friends. But I don't want to talk too long and bore you. First, I need to read that file. So P, my packets, P's, equal RDP cap downloads messages pcap now i have all my packets in ps variable no tcp packet 1663 udp packet no ic so i can say for p in p's for packet in packets print p this is ah this is printing it in the uh, because I've used print, it's printing the binary data. But my last P, if I show it in scappy, ah, this is the problem with the warp. It tries to reinvent the good old terminal and it creates blocks and these kind of things become a little bit strange. P, this is my last packet. If I show it in pcap, in scappy, it will show me all the data. It says this is a packet. It has an Ethernet layer with this destination, with this source. This is a strange. So this is created by program. Inside that, there is a layer of a IP, IP layer. It's IP version 4. And these are the data. Time to live is 64. And this is the checksum. This is the source. This is the destination. Another uh, clue that a program created this sending from this machine to the same machine and saving the data inside that ip there is a udp layer and it says from this source port which is a random higher port so it's normal from a destination port which is compress net hmm. so this is the length and inside that udp there is a raw data packet in this case there is an X there. So what I did, what I, after doing different tests, trying to get statistics, make sure that these are becoming uh, generated randomly. So most probably this is generated by a computer destination ports and everything. I went to print these destination ports. For that, I would say four packet in packets. I can say print this packets UDP layer. Uh, destination port. So I'm asking for this as a numeric value. These are the ones. As you can see, these are all in the ASCII range. Very interesting. So let's print them as the ASCII. You know, there is an ASCII table and each character has a number. For example, 65 is uh, capital letter A. 97 is uh, this A. And that's why in the computer, if you say A is larger than A, the result will be false because this is evaluated as this and this is evaluated as this. This is the ASCII table. And on ASCII table, if I say 
word of A, I will get back this. If I say CHR of 65, I will get A. So let's print the, ouch, let's print the ORD value, sorry, CHR value of this port data. This was a nice and clever idea to hide the, the data in the destination port. Very unusual. This is what we call the red herring sometimes. Practically, you're searching about the load, what is the raw data, what data is being sent, but those are all nonsense. The data is in the destination port. We had this, but let's print them in a way more readable. I would say, okay, print this, but don't use a new line as your end line. Use nothing as your end of the line. So just print them alongside each other. So cool. I got this. Looks kind of like a file or coded thing. What I did on next step, I tried to save this in a file. File, for example, output. Then use the file command. File command will show you the type of this file on Linux and Mac machines and Unix machines. So I try to see if something interesting here. This could have been an executable. You may run it. It would show you the flag or needs reversing. Or this might be a zip file or a rar file or a picture file. Although from the magic file, magic data, I cannot, I can guess that this is not a zip. This is not a JPEG. This is not a GIF, at least not an ordinary one. But I was going to working with this file. Maybe something is there. And suddenly I found out that something is there. You see it? Yes, the answer is here. PCTF secret code in ports. And this was the answer. This was a little bit tasteless in my opinion. If I was planning for this, I would make this file, for example, a JPEG file. And the flag would be there or an executable. But maybe that would make it more and more difficult. Although this is, was very fun. And sorry for calling it tasteless. This specific file having a hidden here, in my opinion, was a little bit guessy and tasteless. But the idea of transferring file based on the destination port, transferring, sorry, data based on the destination port was super cool. We can even create something like, a, uh, for example, 32 encoding. So this will encode any file to 32 characters and use them as the destination port and create a program which can send a file based on where it is calling, which port it is calling. This would be very cool. Even people can create anti-censorship systems with this or whatever. This was very, very nice. So this was the solution. Hope you liked it and hope you start playing more CTFs digging into the data, playing with tools. This is kind of practicing yoga or karate or whatever. You are practicing all the time and seeing new ideas, new things, and learn new tools. Have fun. This was Jody.